Today's topic of discussion is manual tabular forms. Uh, I'd like to share with you today a methodology that I use quite often when building these manual tabular forms. But before we begin, a word of caution. Manual tabular forms are considered by many to be one of the most difficult concepts in APEX. The reason for that, well, we build lots of code. We also work with things like collections, and then we have to do validations and such, and, well, it's all quite confusing. So the number one rule when going to build a manual tabular form is don't do it. That is, if a declarative tabular form could satisfy your business requirements. All right? You've been forewarned. So wait a second. If it's so difficult to build these things, then why would we even want to do it? Well, there's a couple of reasons. And to be quite frank with you, the list of reasons to go from a declarative tabular form to a manual tabular form grows ever shorter with each release of Apex. But there's still some really key reasons that have not yet been addressed. Let's take a look at an example. I'm going to go into a test workspace here and we'll start up a demo app. Okay, what we have here is a really simple example. This is an application uh, that is designed to allow employees to enter vacation time. So I'm going to go create and of course we have a typical start and end date here. And we know how employees like to take vacation. They like to overlap holidays. Okay, now, Labor Day is September 5th, so perhaps they'll take a Friday, and they'll come back then on Tuesday. All right, we click Next, and here we have it, a manual tabular form. Okay, now this particular tabular form is doing two things that you could not do with a declarative tabular form. Number one, it's built on a collection, and I'm going to talk more about collections here in just a moment. Number two, look at the fact that we're, we're toggling, you know, um, in other words, this tabular form takes into account the type of day and only shows a select list that would take time against an employee if it's a work day. Weekends, of course, don't count against the time, and of course, that holiday on the Monday shouldn't count. So the employee can say, ah, well, I'm flying out rather late on Friday, I'll take the evening off, and I'm flying back rather late on Monday, so I want to sleep in, I'll also take the morning off. At that point, they can proceed, confirm their choices, five days off only, uh, one total day counting against the employee, but you get the basic idea. All right, This is something that is not possible using declarative tabular forms. And that brings us to a methodology. If you're going to venture so far as to create one of these manual tabular forms, it's often best to have some kind of methodology you can use to do so. Methodologies help you by keeping a, a sort of standard way of doing things so you don't start from scratch every time. And that's really what I want to provide you today. We're going to talk about some concepts, the, the means through which I work through this, regularly, but I'm also going to provide you with a lot of sample code. Uh, the code will be made available after the webinar. If you email us ahead of time, we can, of course, send it sooner. Otherwise, just wait until we post the recording up on our website. We'll also add the sample files, and, and I'll even include the application there so you can work through it on your own. So two parts to this methodology, uh, sort of a systematic approach to what we'll be doing, but also lots of good sample code. Should make this task a bit easier than it would otherwise be. The methodology I'm going to teach uses collections. This is one of the big choices you have to make when you first decide you're going to make a manual tabular form. Are you going to do it on a base table or are you going to go through a collection? Now the collection adds overhead and in fact if you don't know a whole lot about collections. Um, 
the, the, maybe the caveat to using a collection would be that it won't work as well with large quantities of data. So if you're modifying many rows at once, going off a base table, of course, is the better choice. But in most situations where I create these manual tabular forms, I'm not working with, you know, say, over 5,000 rows at a time. You know, that might be somewhere where I might cut this off, okay? But I always go through collections when creating these manual tabular forms. If you're not familiar with collections, all they really are are these two tables sitting in the APEX schema. And if you look here in the parent table, you notice what we have ID and session ID. There's also collection name. So what happens here, you can think of collections in APEX sort of like temporary tables for a user, or more specifically, for a user's session. All right. The reason we need something like this, we can't use the standard uh, temporary tables in Oracle, which are session or transaction based, because each connection to the database may be a different connection and thus a different temporary table. So we need something different. Collections are what we use. They tie each collection created within a session to a user session ID, maintaining uh, persistence across each request to the site, but simply thought of, these are just like tables. And the kind of tables we create are very generic. Uh, if you look at collection members, members are where the rows of data for each of our tables will be stored. You can see they're rather, rather generic. We just have these varchar 24000s to work with. And even the naming convention is generic, C001 and so on. Well, in subsequent versions of Apex, we got a bit more. We now have a clob column. We have a blob column, an XML type column. And then we have five date and five numeric columns. So there's a little bit more, of course. We don't see that because there's so many of these columns. But uh, 50 varchar 2 is sort of the standard. And that's what we'll be working with today. So those are collections. And I always use these because, frankly, when a user submits the page, if an error occurs, especially a validation error, I want them to be coming back to their tabular form with all of their changes having been saved. And if you don't use a collection, then you either A, lose the data, or B, you have to take the user to an error page, neither of which to me is really the best scenario. So we use collections all the time with this methodology. Here's an overview of what we'll be doing today. Anywhere you see an arrow, that's where I'm going to supply you with some code. And I'm actually going to start with the code I use. Uh, it's very generic, and we're just going to modify it as we go. What we have here should be somewhat familiar. On the left, the page rendering phase, and on the right, page processing phase. Now, on the bottom half of this, you can think of this as the server side, and the top, this part here, is the client side. This is just the browser. Now, within the server side, we have two parts. The bottom part, the custom tables, that's your custom schema, and then the next level up is the Apex schema. So, the way this methodology works, in the page rendering phase, we take data from your custom table or tables, and we move it into a collection. And then we build a report on this collection. And we use the Apex item package to do that, the reason for which is we have the most control and flexibility. And the user then looks at the browser, modifies their tabular form, and submits the page for processing, which takes us to the next step. This is where we take data from the page and move it back to the Apex collection. And we do this before we do any kind of validations or anything like that, any real processing. Once we've gotten past validations, then we move into processing. This is where we take the data and move it back into the custom table. That's what we'll be working on here today. And we're going to start, of course, with the first step on the left.